I've struck out Yucatan so many times this year that they've started begging for fastballs. You want a fastball? You really didn't want to do that, my guy. But after 129 pitches last game, my fastballs might not be any good. I think we're going to go with the hesitation, tell him what's coming pitch. And to keep myself in the lead for the Triple Crown, I'll need to go six innings and not give up a run against one of the best teams in the league. While I prepare for the game, we're going to tackle some big questions, like why I ditched expensive custom cleats to go barefoot, how my face ended up on a world-famous chocolate bar, will enough of you hit subscribe that I reach a million subs by Christmas? And does begging in baseball actually work? Dude, he was he was on pace. Eleven through five. That's not bad. Well, made up, I, mean, I, still, I still wouldn't have been near you. Was he at nineteen? Nineteen and nine, basically. I was just starting to hit stride, dude. When I get past yeah. 75, that's when I hit stride. Yeah. I was 86 through yeah. 6. That's the difference. Which was exactly what I was when I punched out 14 and 6 in Mexico City. It's just this time I got to go. Bravo, congratulations once again, man. Gracias. This is something to me or for everyone, anyone. Records are made to break it, but yeah, next start for me. <laughs> so in yesterday's game, I struck out 19 and 8 and 2 thirds innings, and then Yak came in and struck out the last guy to make it 20, setting a new team record for most strikeouts in a game ever in LMB history. So everyone's been congratulating Yak on being the one to make history. And how do we celebrate big achievements? Tunnel. Yak needs a tunnel. Yeah. Yak needs a tunnel. Yak. No, no, but let me mention something Yak, first. Yeah. And the team is not only one as a group, because we end up with 20. Yak! Yak! Yeah. Come on, so, Yak! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and run just because! Hey! That's the new guy we didn't have stress yesterday! Oh my god! Go ahead, Twin! So many tunnels. Alright, alright, here we go. Here we go, alright. That was, that was so mild. So mild. <laughs> I can't do this one. My back's locked up. The beds at the hotel aren't too bad. No. The air conditioning works, which is all, it's all I need. The AC, if, if it doesn't get cold, I'm screwed. I can live with like a hard bed, soft bed, whatever, but. Ah, yes, the important stuff. This is Justin Courtney, and it's his uh, first day with the team. We've had a lot of teammate turnover recently. Chili pad is what it's called. Oh, yeah. So I have one of those, too. Best. Yeah. It's too annoying to bring on the road, so. I travel with my own pillow, but, yeah, the chili pad is. That's a game changer. That thing's a dream. When you get that locked into the right temperature, oh. Where is Salazar? No Salazar? The office told me before we came that they released Salazar. Oh, they release Salazar. Yeah. Teammate turnover is tough, especially when there are people you consider friends. But it is part of every baseball season, so getting good at developing new relationships is actually really important. Even though sometimes having a good relationship with coaches and teammates can actually harm your career. But more on that in a second. We had signed two, Wilcox and Salazar. Uh -huh. And then we released now both of them. Yes. So... We got him and the other catcher. Are we planning on getting any more relievers, or is that it? Uh, we're talking about it. Because we're getting uh, Familia back, but he's got to play catcher. Well, right? but we're waiting to see yeah. if he's going to come or not. I'm not clear with that. And I hope he gave us a date for me to prepare a plan for him. Right. You know? So right now we're kind of, what we got is what we got. That's, that's it. Yep. That's it. We'll make it work. Fine. Basically nothing. I'm not gonna throw. I'm sure it'd feel a little bit bad if I went to like external. But everything's just like on the outside of the electronon right here. I did my uh, pronation, supination stuff last night and my finger holds in my hotel room. So that stuff just like resets everything, which is great. I think Marika is short from the other day. Tag someone that needs a baseball this big to get a hit. Vlog update. I got seven days in between starts. I had a large increase in intensity and volume last night. I got about three hours of sleep because I couldn't fall asleep. Soreness probably hasn't hit me yet. So my plan is to do nothing but mobility and cardio stuff today and tomorrow. I'm gonna simulate like my start was on Sunday and then get on a five day routine. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to pitch again on Friday. So I have two days here. I'm gonna give myself some extra recovery time and then we're gonna go on a limited volume for next start for sure we're going to keep that pitch count under 100 just to make sure we don't get into a situation where i've spiked volume and intensity too much too quickly good thing i had a couple extra days to get my body right because i need my fastball to be good next game to deal with yucatan's lineup this cycle is going to be all about just getting my body ready for next start making sure i feel good my mobility is there all the inflammation soreness is wiped out i'm in a good spot throwing wise so time to focus on the body oh that's going to bounce over my head 
I got a power shag. I gotta get my cardio in. Thank you. How are you feeling today? You good? Really good. You take the fly balls, and then if you don't get one, I'll get it. I'm, I'm not gonna get in your way. <laughs> fly ball yesterday was crazy. I thought it was common. Yeah. I, I did too. He hit it, and I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it was doing like this, and then just. Yeah. <laughs> they tell you when you're going today? No. I don't know how it's gonna work because. Hernandez is uh, another lo our long guy, obviously. Yeah. It was Pont, so like we had me and uh, Alamon. Connor can go long too. Well, it's crazy to me too, is that you'll send something on Twitter, or you'll make a video or whatever, right? And it'll get 98% positivity. Yeah. And then two people will make a comment. It's like, oh, this is so out of touch. And it's like, oh, this is a bad tweet, or it's a bad, like, whatever, you're insensitive. It's like, what? What about the 98% of people who I appealed to that agreed with this? I just learned that you can't please everybody. I learned that from a very young age. I, I wish I would have learned it a little sooner. Entering pro ball. I didn't ask that many questions. I didn't have any, inf the information was given to me that I just absorbed that, that I did, did not work. Yeah, I was probably on the other end of it. I was so... Like, nope, I will not listen to you. Look what look at the career you had. Yeah. I'm not but saying I, that like I'm not saying you're uncoachable, but No, I'm super coachable, but we just have to have like a structured conversation. Exactly, exactly. You have to have a reason for what you're telling me. Right. You know? And if you can explain it to me in a way and like answer the questions that I have, right. then fine, I'll listen. i I love learning. I'm constantly trying to learn on my own, you know? But if it's my way or the highway or it's the cookie cutter. This is what we're doing in this organization. I had a great, a great example. They're like, you have to throw 70% fastballs because you have to establish your fastball to have success in the big leagues. I was like, why? Like, what do you mean why? I'm like, well, you know, why, why do you have to establish your fastball? Like, aren't there pitchers that pitch with off-speed stuff? No, for starters, you have to establish your fastball. So where do you want me to throw my fastball? Because I find throwing fastballs, but I want to throw them in the top of the zone. You need to throw them down and away. I'm like, okay, so walk me through a sequence. So I throw fastball down and away, strike one. What do I throw next? Like, do it again. I'm like, what? So there's no, there's no like follow up. Right. There's no sequence. I'm like, okay, so like, what about like the tunneling? Like, if I throw a fastball down and away, like, no pitches pair off of that. You know, how do I throw my slider or whatever? I'm like, what do you mean? You just throw it for a strike. I'm like, okay, this is not a good answer. Like, I have a better understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish than you do. Yeah. So why would I listen to you about something? When did this happen? Still like the old school mentality yeah. where, Hey, we're gonna put the string across the yep. bottom of the zone. Yeah, it's got to be below it. Yeah, you gotta hit it. Can't get hurt down here. Yeah, you can't. False. They sent the pitching coordinator down to tell me I had to throw 70% fastballs down away. So I proceeded to go seven innings and punch out 13. And I threw two fastballs all night. I didn't throw a fastball till the fourth inning. They got he got super pissed at me. Like, what the f am I supposed to tell the organization? I was like, tell them that I went seven and punched out like 13 or whatever Both. and give up two hits. I had a meeting the next day with the freaking coordinator, the manager, the pitching coach. They yelled at me. Flash forward like six years, everyone's like, oh yeah, you shouldn't throw fastballs ever because it's like the most hittable pitch. So we should all just throw like 40 to 50% breaking balls. But I was too much on the side of like, nope, I'm not listening. That's wrong. I would literally just tell my big league pitching coach when I was a rookie, I was like, no, that's wrong. And he'd be like, what the fuck did you just say to me? And well, at the end of the day, you'd be like, well, if I failed, it wasn't because of you, it was just yeah. me. And like, to me, I feel that's the one thing I, I wish I would have done a little bit differently. Today. Yeah, I got the ability to dictate my own development and bet on myself that I could figure it out. Yes. And the cost that I paid for it was ruined relationships and a bad reputation, which is why I don't have my career right now. Well, also we have to have a destination. If someone came to you and said, hey, Lake, you're hitting 290, in a ball you're crushing fastballs but you're not on time you, you can't adjust the sliders as you go to double a and triple a in the big leagues guys have better sliders you're gonna get chewed up so what we want to do is get you a little bit deeper in your legs so you have the ability to buy yourself some time to you know stay on the ball and this is how we think we're going to do it that's completely different right. than if it's just like oh uh, i got this new kid in a ball and his hands are here but I want to see guys with their hands here. So like for no reason, with no destination, let's just make a change. Yeah. That's, and that's how most that's, of it that's goes. It's funny you mentioned that type of scenario because that's what kind of happened. Yeah. Out of high school, I was kind of just like, tap, like get it down and yeah. go. Yeah. And right when I got the pro ball, hey, we need you to hit home runs. I'm 18. I'm yeah. Like, so we're going to do this big leg kick and get, and it's like, no, that's extremely hard. Can you wipe? I'm great. 
<laughs> I will machine. If you if you are concerned, I will agree to a limited volume next outing, if you'd like. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably the next two items, Shaggy. I got I got my thing. You gave me my thing, Lo. So whatever you, you whatever you want the rest of the way. I got the bullpen arrest, which is my only goal yesterday, honestly. Okay. okay. But once I got through the fifth, I was like, okay, I have a new goal. <laughs> things, things changed. Things changed a little bit. Yeah. We're in better shape today than we were yesterday. Elbow feels good. Shoulder feels good. The bit most uh, most soreness is around my spine, just from all the rotation, which is plenty manageable. So I think I locked up the strikeout lead last night. I think if I didn't strike anyone out the rest of the year, I probably still would win it. Anybody else want a game behind? Uh, I'm too clear right now. I think Visa is going, he usually pitches a day or two after me, so. I don't know either. I don't either. And then uh, this guy in Veracruz got like a 227 ERA. Reyes. Uh, Reyes, yeah. Did we face, did we face him? We didn't face him. I think we missed we, him. We didn't see him at home, no. Yeah. So last night I struck out 19 hitters. And in Mexico, they call strikeouts chocolates. So there's this page on Twitter, LMB memes, that has made me like Willy Wonka and said I'm like the king of chocolates. Today, we're at a chocolate factory because Oaxaca is known for their chocolate. So we're gonna see exactly how all of the chocolate is made. It's perfect, a nice little blend. Yeah. Fresh chocolate. The real Ooh, it's thick. It's yeah. good? Yeah. It's so good. What do you think, Rich? This, this is amazing. That's probably the best chocolate I've ever had. Right. It's so good. Like Wait, so we just... Yeah. Yes! Right. Uh -huh. Try it. Yeah, so good. There's not like much of a taste, but it has a little bit of an aftertaste, yeah. So I'm the king of chocolate that's on the diamond. He's the king of chocolate. <laughs> the good chocolate. So all the raw ingredients are mixing with the sugar down here and getting dumped into a pail. And then they're going to mix it all around to blend it all. And then that's how we're going to have chocolate. Pour. Hot. 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 Yeah. Oh. So just, just lick? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did you get, did you get some of that? The best chocolate you ever had. That's the best chocolate. Yeah. El mejor. Mayordomo, if you're in Mexico, there's 17 in Oaxaca, 62 in the country. If you're in the States and you want to get some of this chocolate, there's three in LA and one in New York, and they actually have some locations over in Europe too, so places worldwide. And that chocolate we were just testing turns into a bunch of these small little candy bars that now have my face on them to celebrate my 19 strikeout record. Also, I'm craving that chocolate just watching this footage back right now. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, back to baseball. It's time to rile up the team it's a little bit. I go here, turn the ball a little bit, so it's equal on the fingertips. My fingers are spread, whereas on my slider, it's like they're like together. You rotate it up. I just want this. I just want a seam that's equal on my fingertips. Sure. Spread your fingers a little bit more. Yeah, and that's gonna be a cutter. That wide? Sure. Or you can go a little bit closer together if you want. That's my forcing fastball. Yeah, but you're gonna throw it like a slider. Rip my fastball, touch the thumb a little bit so it's over there more. Yeah, and rip a slider. Rip a slider. You don't want to throw that pitch multiple times in a bat if you don't have to. You just dump it in early so they see spin with no movement, and then you just rip your big one later. I just want like a quick ground ball, kind of like. You, you get that on gyro slider. I'm never trying to strike someone out with a cutter. Unless I throw it like hard, like into a lefty, and like just, just somewhere down there. Because I used to use a cutter as like an output back in the day. That's, yeah. That's why I had a different experience. I look at it as something that sets everything else up. It just starts up in the zone and it ends up kind of down in the zone and it doesn't do anything. If you look at my cutter percentage after two strikes, it's like zero. If you look at my slider percentage before two strikes, it's probably like 10, 15%. But my cutter percentage is probably like 40. One walk? Yeah, 11 call. punches. Not a single complaint about the umpire. Not one. And if anything, he gave me two calls that I remember. But everything in the zone, well, the thing is, like, I had a game where, like, if it was in the zone, they're swinging. Mm. And, and if it was actually in the zone, it was me, because I'm a freaking pro something like him. Yeah. Nasty back to the Yeah, being in the zone is pretty effective. You go too, huh? Where? <laughs> me. Venezuela, no chance. Venezuela? What, what team? Aguila. Everyone says we say in, in, in Dominican. In Dominican, yeah. They're trying to get me to Hermosillo. 
And there you go, though. If you did, you would do like second half? You want to go home for a little bit? I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I'm going to finish this season, and then I'm going to see what I want to do. But there's no chance that you're putting your, that you're putting your, like, your cliques away, right? Like, you're going to keep playing? I'll play next year, yeah. You're getting better. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the frustrating part. <laughs> I'm better now than when I won a Cy Young. I want to go back to Japan and try to win the Sawamura there. The Sawamura Award, it's their Cy Young. The only problem is, is like, Asia's just so far. It's hard, man. Like, you didn't being, like it. I, loved I it. loved it, but it's just like long season and then you can't talk to anyone because it's like when you're asleep, everybody's awake. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know? That's true. That was the only tough part. But the culture, the food, the people, the base, like it was all great. It would have to be like an hour before my game where I'll be able to catch my parents. Like, yeah. When they're not in work and like not too late. Yeah, I think if I had like a peer group, mm -hmm. it would have been it would have been easier. If you're a hitter and the umpire tells you to like get back in the box, does that piss you off? Keep it more. Yeah. I almost rather say something than walk away. Because the umpires respond better when you say something? Yeah. Yeah, as a catcher, you can't really show the umpire up because you screw your pitcher over then. Get up, get up, get up. Yeah! That's a homer, right? I need to get hit the top and hit something behind him and come back. What are they? Aquino just missed a homer by this much. Literally hit like right on the top of the yellow and came back in. More weight room, Aquino. More weights. Lift some more weights. Hey, I reduced now to two, two runs. Two runs? <laughs> After yesterday, I was <laughs> Oh, I need a rally burger. Might just be banana. Well, there's no jam, so it wouldn't even be like a rally burger. It's just like a peanut butter bread witch. Yeah, I want the big one. Just what I need. How are you staying out of this? You just dip, dodge, duck, dive, and dodge, huh? And Rock has got a pitch tonight, I think, because he hasn't thrown in two, three days. If we go up by six or seven, then you probably save Connor right. and you put in the new guy, yeah. Oh my goodness. That was a fucking missile. My heel feels so much better after that. It's crazy. You just strip it like he spent like probably 45 total seconds like actually like getting into it. Nine day difference. What is that? Well, that's an ant? That's not an ant, it's a freaking bird. Hi, baby, Yak. Hi, baby. Hey, that's your bike. You're not allowed to complain. You put up a zero. <laughs> hey, good job, bro. What ate those innings? Good job, bro. The Rodriguez slider was a f joke of a swing. He was like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. He was 15 hits for the boys today. It's a good night. It's the right pitch. You look like Luke Voigt, and you're going to strike out on three straight sliders. That's what you look like. <laughs> Castellanos? You ain't got Castellanos in you. You think the pitchers will win? They can't help pitchers. A team of pitchers versus a team of hitters. You will beat them. But our defense is going to suck. That's not true. That's not true at all. I'll play shortstop. I got us not scoring many runs. They went through a strike. I think plenty of position players could box heaters at like 82 miles an hour. And I think we're going to ground out a lot. I got, I don't know, I got them winning. I already told them I want to face them for nine innings after the season. Oh boy, we're going to ask the guys you know. All the position players on one team, all the pitchers on another team. We play each other. Who wins? Okay. A baseball game? Yeah. Probably, probably the pitchers because the guys can play the you think five pitcher, five position players that could they could just box strikes? Maybe in Mexico. I'm going deep. You don't got the power to go deep. I got the torque. I can. not No, you don't. Okay. Why don't you guys have that little BP? Somebody, somebody. Look at look at right now. He's trying to get in there. So you saying I would go deep? I know you would. You would not go deep. I sure as hell don't have the torque to get out of the Mexico City. No. no. <laughs> like, how often do you see a position pitcher, a position player, pitch and walk the house? It never happens. Yeah. Never happens. They all volunteer for catcher. Nobody wants my catcher. So I like catcher. I play. You blocking my curveball in the dirt to lefties? But the curveball, I need the curveball in the dirt to all these lefties over here. That argument is still going on, by the way. Pitchers versus hitters is a classic way to stir up the pot. There we go. Anyway, we took the win and the series win as well. On to the next. Good job, boys. Dude, my body feels surprisingly good today. I don't know how to feel about that. 
I am partnerless. We can chuck. I get my throwing partner stolen sometimes by people on this team. The other team literally stole your throwing partner. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Salazar was his throwing partner, but Salazar got released. And when that happened, Salazar got signed by Oaxaca, which is the team that we are playing. It's always kind of weird when that happens. Now, if he plays, he yeah, plays they're probably they're just gonna like uh, DM me or something. Okay, have him reach out to Rachel. All right. Cause she's taking all the, um, all the requests. Yeah. Let's go girl. Let's see you. Yeah. Let's see you around. We're, we're doing that over. Tony. Here. <laughs> now shake your hand and give you a hug. <laughs> Good luck the rest of the way. And then I guess you can say I stole his spot on our <laughs> Well, that's also pretty fucked up on your part, so. Well, now I get to throw with you, so it's a win for me. Apparently not having cholera is great for recovery, since I threw 127 pitches and I feel better today than I have on any of my starts the last, like, month. Be surprised to know, kids, that not having a deadly disease helps your body recover. Who's saltier, Lakin on a daily basis, or yak after a good outing. After a bad outing, you're mad. After a good outing, you're just salty about some unlucky shit. <laughs> Allow yourself to be happy when you throw up a zero one time. It helps the mood, you know? If you just hold your ground, it'll never hit you. You guys, listen to a story though. I'm like down like this, stretching, talking to somebody and I get hit right in the chest. Oh, I, I've so. I've my one forever. For, so yeah, you're set. The one in like a lifetime actually got you. So you're no. You are no longer at risk. Oh no. Sorry, Yak. He got a tunnel and now he has to play catch with me. I'll break him in. <laughs> this new guy hasn't missed me a single time. Everything's straight to my chest. I don't even have to move. Making me feel self-conscious about my command. I mean, look at that. Would have smoked me. Yeah, I finally hit him in the chest. Play right there. Yeah, yeah, sorry for only hitting in the chest like twice. I was on a little roll there. You were, I was telling the camera, I was like, I don't think he's missed me a single time. So what's the, so Arsenal, fastball, more of like a hop? Yeah. Okay, so your hop and breaking ball are your, are your two main ones? Yeah. What, velo? 94 and a half on average. Oh, okay. So that's basically, that's exactly my fastball profile. So I know, I know that pitch well. Your cutter is similar to like the gyro slider that yep. I know, and it's been like one vert, three horizontal, like minus three horizontal or is it backing up on you arm side? No, it's going glove side okay, okay. three. I'll use that split change. It's like eight off the fastball, 83, 84. With, last year with the Mets in spring training, I was watching a lot of uh, Senga. Senga and Carrasco. Yeah. Senga can split his fingers. Yeah. Like, he throws a legitimate fork ball. Yeah. Like it's in there like this and he can somehow throw and he it. He says that I don't even, it's like I don't split it that hard. Like I don't try to jam it. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's his. I used to, I used to throw, try to throw that pitch for a split where I would like get this knuckle out of the way. Yeah. But well, I never what, could what control that. Generally speaking, when I throw mine and the guys that I've seen and talked to about it, the ball that. spins around an axis that's right off of this knuckle. So if this, this one. that one, yeah. yeah. So if that knuckle is on a seam, you're going to get the ball to spin through a seam. Mm. If that knuckles... And it'll be inconsistent because of that? No, it's just not going to get the seam shift effect. So you're not going to get the added benefit of the aerodynamics that push it down. Where if you get that knuckle in the middle of the horseshoe and it spins through here, then you get that you get that, that, that nice axis. Oh, like this? So he's like catcher where the pitchers? I see. Congrats, boys. You too, guys. Yep. Congrats, Yak. <laughs> Robbie, I got a question for you. Oh gosh, all of our position players, all of our pitchers on the other team and the two teams play each other. Who wins? Oh, come on. Position players? Yes. Oh, <laughs> just stirring the pot. Not a blowout, but we won. You think, what, what do you think the score is? Say maybe like two or three runs. He? Cause you guys are going to throw strikes. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to throw strikes hey, on the back. starting that game? I'm starting the game for us. But I have a shitty defense though, you know? I got Moyers at second. No, I got no. Leal behind the plate. Can't play defense. I know they can't play defense. But you guys are gonna throw 80 miles an hour meatballs in the zone. You got Aquino, that's it. No. Aquino's gonna give you one inning. Robbie's gonna throw 74 from the side. Hey, we got some heaters on this side. I we agree. Made some contact. <laughs> you tell him that when he comes in. I'll tell him right now. Hey. What are we doing to Martin? Huh? What are we doing to Martin? Yeah, I know. I never throw sliders to lefties, that's why. Well, hold on, you lead, late, cur late. You lead curveball, which is okay. He's late as fuck on the fastball up and in. Late again. Change up? 
No, that slider. That was a slider. One one was a slider. It was eighty seven. Down away. The one he hit? No, the one one pitch. Damn, I don't even know. You went first pitch curveball just off. Heater up and in foul. Change up below yeah, the zone change ball. Up. Change up why? Ball. Yeah. If you throw that in the zone, it hits at seven hundred feet. Well, that's why I was he's, there. But yeah, yeah. But he's anyway. late here, and he hasn't gotten to this all series. So uh -huh. then. You're two one. You go heater up in here again. Late, late, and then and then you slider. throw an Osprey pitch slider, yeah. in the zone. Yeah. Why? Accident. <laughs> Stupid pitch. I should have went fastball. Yeah. Again. But remember, you said about the slider that like when, that you usually hit them. So I tried to catch the plate on out. There's but, no reason to throw the pitch. Period. Right. Yeah. Because he hits bottom row of the zone, off speed stuff, crushes it. The wind fortunately started blowing in on that pitch. But just oh yeah, just was, just check back in mentally. As soon as I threw it, I got it. Yeah, just check back in. Uh, we got some posters commemorating the night, which are really sick. I like the fact that they put the TrackMan stuff here and all the pitches. They had to get me one of these. All the strikeouts are highlighted in yellow. Oh, it looks like I struck out ten straight outs. Max Velo ninety eight three. My average spin for the night was twenty five ninety. It's pretty cool. How's our new guy? Max. They didn't throw any splits. Everyone thought they were splitting on TV. Oh, he must be throwing a straight down slider for you. Yes! Oh, yeah, he did! Oh, yeah. Go! <laughs> Never seen it. Never seen it. Even Never. in professional baseball, we still give up little league homers. So that was a strikeout, but the ball bounced. When it bounced off the catcher, it deflected into fair territory, like a really good bunt on the third base line. Lakin had to rush over there to try to get to the ball in time and throw it to first to record the strikeout. And when he did, he overthrew first base. Now our right fielder was backing up, but when he went to try to cut the ball off, he got caught between the outfield wall and the mounds of the opposing team's bullpen. And the ball snuck right past him all the way down into the right field corner. So a strikeout ended up being a Little League homer. That's not hurt, is it? That's the other no, it's, it's a three down. base error. So it should be, it should be man on first, one out. Okay, like. Never seen ever. I never seen that in my life. No one, yeah, no one here's ever seen that. Hey, slider was. Yeah. Ronnie threw well. We Gutierrez go. and Marmaleos both had three hits, and it was another series sweep for the good guys. Fuck out of it. Guys, we are in Querétaro, and this is my new favorite stadium I've ever played in. I'm not even kidding. Uh, this is not me trying to be sarcastic or anything like that. This is legitimately my favorite stadium I've played in because it is half built. Like the stadium is not even close to being done. And I'm gonna show you guys around. The facilities that we have are just incredible. It's going to be very nice when it's done. This is a brand new team. It's their first year in the league. They had to scramble to get everything set up and a stadium built and the infrastructure built and everything like that. Again, I'm not trying to shit on this. I legitimately, this is legitimately my favorite stadium because of the facilities. So let me show you starting with the showers. Check this out. <laughs> you think this goes here? What you know, it's at the top. It goes up here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's a nail, right? Yeah. So they just nailed the clip into the cement and it just popped out uh, while we were testing the shower. So, okay. Next, check out the restrooms. Honestly, pretty nice. Not done, but we have urinals, we got stalls, and we got toilet paper. The water coming into the urinals and everything is through these PVC pipes. So this is about as makeshift as you can get. Here's the locker room. So it is actually nice and spacious and the lockers are pretty nice. Uh, however, right over here, if you look at this little gap in the wall, that is the parking lot outside. It is not paved, it's a bunch of dirt. But if that gap was a little bit bigger, fans could just like see directly into our locker room or just walk right in. And actually over here in this portion of the locker room, that is just wide open to the outside. Cement floors, no carpet or anything like that. This is the manager's room. As you can see, there's uh, there's nothing here. No lockers or anything. This is their restroom. Cool feature of the restroom is you can sit on the toilet and see into the dugout. There's no door, so this is the concourse right here. That's the restroom. Okay, let's check out the field. So dugout's actually pretty nice, nice and spacious. Uh, one problem though is if you're standing right here, you're directly at eye level with the pad. 
so you can't see the game. But they have these nice seats anyway, where you can sit down, you're basically at field level, and you get to see a nice view. And you don't have to worry about getting smoked in the dugout like some of the ones we've been in this year. It is turf all the way around, except for the dirt on the infield. So playing surface will be fairly nice. Well, the stadium is half built. There's no seating on the upper levels, but there will be. The suites are not in yet. So if we're playing during the day and there's sun back there, it's gonna be extremely hard to see the ball coming off the bat. There's construction crews working on the stadium right now, like during the game. It's currently like an hour before the game. We had a really rough travel day, by the way. Bus left Mexico City at 10 a.m. There's an unfortunate accident on one of the freeways, so we didn't get into the hotel until like 4.30. The hotel is about 45 minutes away from the stadium. We uh, we drove, we got here about 6 o'clock, show and go, 7 o'clock game. But uh, this is the batter's eye out here in center field, and it is functional, but falling down a little bit. It's just a black tarp. There's no like actual batter side. Uh, infield is nice though. I assume the, the mound's gonna be nice. It looks a little bit, it looks like a pretty good slope. Uh, let's go find the bullpens. <laughs> okay, so coming out of the bullpen, you're gonna be careful that you don't trip because if you catch your foot on any of these steps, you're going down hard. It doesn't look very secure, but very spacious bullpen, like using a lot of space. There's enough room for probably, what do you think, Kev, six? Six lanes of throwing here, probably? You could probably fit six, but we only got two. Looks nice though, the mounds look nice. Decent slope to them. The plates do look lined up with the rubber. This one might be slightly off, it's hard to tell, but they look pretty close. One issue though, is that the mounds are throwing like towards each other. So the home team's bullpen is here, and if they overshoot the fence, which honestly is not very high. That ball is coming straight into our pen to smoke someone. There's a, a nice little passageway between the two bullpens, so there might be a bullpen brawl if some people start talking shit. Just easy passage. Or, or if you get traded mid-game. Or if you get traded mid-game, you just sneak right into the other bullpen. We actually just traded Kev to Cadetito. See you, Kev. Pretty nice bullpen. No problem. No. We got some wires and stuff just exposed right here. And let's say you have to use the restroom during the game and you don't want to go down to the dugout to use the manager's restroom that sees straight into the dugout with no door. You have another restroom area over here, except uh, there's no toilet. So yeah, bullpen guys have no restroom. They're gonna have to go down to the dugout if they have to relieve themselves. It's going to be a very cool stadium when it's done. You got a little party deck thing over here. And then down the right field line, you're gonna have a lot of lawn seating, which actually looks really cool. I don't know if they plan on putting stands in the outfield or not, but they have plenty of space to do so. So this might end up being one of those stadiums that actually has surround seating here. Walking around in the outfield, the turf is not like fully flat. It kind of simulates natural grass. So this is what I was talking about out here in center field where they have plenty of space to kind of build around the stadium. Camera operators for center field camera. Here's the uh, here's the batter's eye. It's just uh, just some fabric wrapped around some poles out here. It's gonna start in about an hour and the sun is gonna set directly behind the stands. So people in left field and center field are gonna have a terrible time until that sun's down. Again, I wanna stress that I'm not being sarcastic at all. This is legitimately my favorite stadium that I've played in. You just show up to a random field with your boys and you play a game and see who's better. There's no doors on the bathrooms and you go play a professional baseball game. This is honestly sick. Oh yeah, you see that? That is zero bars of cell service and there's no Wi-Fi here. So it's legitimately, you show up, nothing else to do here besides play a baseball game. It is a little concerning that it's 6.05, the game starts in 55 minutes and the team bus is not here yet. We have like four or five players. Our starting pitcher is not here yet. Um, I'm honestly considering like going and warming up and being like, yo, I can throw you like an inning or two while everyone gets ready. I think I'm, I mean, I feel like I should, I feel like I should do that. Well, it's starting to pour. We're in a rain delay. This is what the uh, entrance to our dugout looks like. Underneath the stadium, the water is just pouring down the concrete. And that is a scene inside of our locker room with water coming in from the outside, flooding the floor, soaking the lockers. Pretty sweet. What up? Oh, I can't wait. It's, this is honestly my favorite stadium we've played in. Where's Moyers? Moyers? Hello. Is our starter going to have time to warm up before the game? Probably. Do you need someone to cover an inning to give him more time? It damn sure won't be you. I just like to tell you that Steve Chase, he, he will be ready. But okay. uh, let me ask you another thing. Remember that you threw with one, you sideline with one day? I'm going to throw tomorrow. 
tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, I'll throw, I'll throw my bullpen tomorrow, but I should know if we were going to have someone here to pitch, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I wanted to be close enough that if I yeah, need to cover anybody. All right, well, crisis averted, I guess. Where's Moyer's hat? Moyer's! See? Yeah, all good. How do I... <laughs> Wait for it. En un momento nos podría firmar. Soy del staff de la tele. No traigo ahorita mi pluma, pero para el record, tengo que conseguir esto. Okay. I think there's Wi-Fi here now, but yeah, I have the visitors. How, yeah. how grindy is this? Pretty cool, huh? It's my favorite stadium we've played at because it's just so incomplete. Half of us in dark grays, half of us in light grays, right some now. reds, some teals. Spend eight hours on a bus, get 10 minutes to warm up for a game, and go whoop someone's ass. We're going to put up about 17. Yeah. For sure. That's always how it goes. Dude, I don't think their team's here either, though. I've seen one of their players. That's not <laughs> Guys, I'm all for signing autographs, as you'll see, but have a little bit of common sense. Why is there just some fan out here? Don't ask for a picture or an autograph in the middle of a team workout. <laughs> Dude, honestly, my arm feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah, why are there like legitimate cables just on the field? It appears that what I've always known to be true is actually true. The more pitches I throw, the better I feel afterwards. After I get past 100 pitches, every pitch I throw, starts erasing damage from like pitch number one, two. What is that record for most pitches in the modern era? What is the modern era? Oh, dude, what is this? Wait, no. No, dude, it's the cloth. Oh, the fabric under it? Dude, the dirt's only like less than an inch deep here. I like everything about this stadium. You wanna walk or what do you wanna? I have, where do you wanna go today? You might have to pitch, I, I don't. Oh, we got lights, lights work. Okay, so today is Tuesday. I last pitched on Friday. I don't really have much to work on after my last start. I got a bullpen tomorrow. I'm just trying to play some athletic catch. Use my eyes. My body feels really good today, so hopefully we just keep that going until tomorrow. We are at 6,000 feet elevation here, so it'll be comparable to Mexico City. Good game, good game. Cut change thing. It's just the air, man. You caught the right axis where it's really gonna go this way because of the air it cuts. Yeah, so like weird. Throw it enough, yeah. Know. You want to go here or? Go on the bus. You go out there in case I miss one. Okay, yeah. Show me what we're working with here. When I when I do this, my this is my how you say in English? My grip. Yeah. I, I grip my fat with like this. That's okay. What I here. Okay. All right. So the middle finger has a seam, and you're tucked underneath. And what do you want the breaking ball to do? You want down, you want sideways, like slider, curl, like what is it? Just both? I just I need a sharper break. Okay. Because this is popping on my hand. Right. So the hit is like, okay, breaking ball. I don't have that, that boom. Okay. So that. Yeah, let me catch a couple. Or is that cutter or what is that? Cutter. Yeah. Okay. It's coming out with like pretty much backspin. So you're too much behind it. Okay. You got to get your wrist a little bit on the side of it. Right here. Yeah. But don't, don't. Don't try to do anything with the wrist. Okay. Just instead of being here, just rotate a little bit so you're on the side. Okay. Think curveball. Throw a curveball. You throw a curveball, right? Let me see a curveball. Okay. What are we throwing? Okay. I see. How do you hold curveball like that? Okay. And where do you, when you throw it, you feel it come off of which finger? I feel doing more of this, like. Okay, so you feel it more like, as opposed to like one finger uh -huh. pulling. Okay, take this finger off the ball. Uh -huh. And then, so you have a lot of pressure there. And then try to like use this finger to like pull the front of the ball. Okay, that spin is really good. I want you to grip a curve ball how you normally do. But instead of having this finger off the ball, I want you to put it a little bit spread. Okay. But I want you still to throw a curveball. Okay. And then we're going to see if this goes more like slider okay. or not. But throw a curveball. <laughs> One more. Okay. Curveball has good spin. Front, It's dead over the top. Fastball has dead backspin. Your fastball, your hand is here, right? Your curveball, your hand is here on the side. So the cutter, the hand needs to be between curveball and fastball, somewhere in the middle. Just It's got to get to the side. Because right now on your cutter, 
you're trying to like do it this way, okay. but it's coming out with just dead backspin. And we need the hand to be more on the side of it. So it comes out mm, more like, like that. Curbo, like half curbo and half curbo, half oh, fastball. Okay, shoot. That's, so, okay. so try that one. More. Yes. Yes. That feel. Uh-huh. Perfect. That's the right spin for a slider. Okay. So you got to find the, the feeling of that middle between a curveball and a fastball, that wrist position. That's the right spin. So throw a couple more and just see if you can get them to start straight. Yep. But same wrist position. That was too much curveball. Yeah, throw me like three more, but throw them from 90 feet. 90 so feet. go back even with second base okay. and throw one. Okay. So you're gonna have to like really get out in front, but keep that same, not curveball, not fastball, right in between. Here. And then you'll be able to see it move more. So too much fastball. More curveball. Yes. Slide, yeah, cutter slider. Okay. See, I'm just trying to get him to like lock it and yeah. too too much curveball, too much fastball. <laughs> the couple that you got right, you saw the movement, right? Yeah. You saw it go like there. That's what we want. So when your hand's coming through, go to go to like your release point. So your fastball is here. Curveball is here, right? So you got to be like, not not fastball, not quite curveball, in the middle. So when you're here, the ball is going to come straight out, fastball, right? Now here, the ball is going to come out. See how you're a little on the side? It's not quite. It's not quite curveball. Okay. That's curveball. Yeah. Slider's there. Okay. So it's going to come off of the thumb, and then these fingers are going to roll the, the side of the ball there, and that's what's going to make it go. That way. Make sense? Okay. My fingers when I I was throwing like this. Yep. And then throwing fast. I feel more control doing that because this I feel like Yeah. I, I can throw it like harder as I can or like, Yeah. You have a big cutter, maybe right. So for me I hold my cutter on this seam, like almost like a four seam. Uh-huh. But just twist a little bit. And then I have my thumb underneath like you do. Mm. And it's just the it's the it, wrist it, it's, the, it's, it's the just the there yeah. it's the wrist and you just throw it as hard oh, as you can. can and because it comes off here no watch so you're coming through because your hand is on the side huh? there comes off there like this go. and then Boom. rip right and yeah. that way you can use both of the fingers and you can have a good grip you on it like right fastball. right you can throw it with the same fastball grip okay but fastballs here Water. cutters there curveball there and then just hold it hold it tight and throw it hard but the hand has to stay on top on top and on the side because that's what you want to you want to get the the hand pulling like that that's it yeah thank you bro yep we can work more if you ever if you want to throw some tomorrow or whenever yeah, every day just come grab me and i'll okay. catch them and we'll talk okay thank all right you. yep appreciate it anytime thank you thank see you. see thanks Zach. thank you see that's what happened? Good. Good off the tarp at center field. Off, right to the right of the batter's eye in center. Fresh off, fresh off the bus. They said he took. They said he took three swings into the net. Like I'm good. You like was seeing this guy deep too. He's like fouling his stuff off, and he got the two-two. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. When you got it, you got it. You know. Good hit. Yeah, Robbie's fourth swing of the day was his first in the game, and it was a uh, homer. Like I said earlier, this is usually how it goes on days like this. Straight off the bus. We're putting up, we're putting up like 15 tonight for sure. Same spots, except they got this net at the exact wrong height. Cause you can't stand and watch the game. You can see over. I'm, I'm like right in the middle of it. All right. I'll take, I'll take the double boys. Straight off the bus. Four in the first. One out? We got one out? Two. Two. I can't read the scoreboard from here, so. Today, I'm going to try to throw my cutter. Why? Because like you said I can, right? You said I could throw a cutter like this. You said it's a slider. Right there. As your finger flicks it. I don't like my cutter. I want, I need a good third pitch. 
I got you. You have one. one. No, it's shitty. It's not, it's not good enough yet. What What do you? I want it to feel good. Like this, I know I can throw good. This, I know I can throw the good. This one. This is why. Five cutters that didn't do shit. The cutters don't do shit. I needed to do some sort of shit. No. I need a little bit of shit. You don't. You just needed to do nothing and go right in the middle of the zone. Some people you just can't save from themselves, you know? It's not a good pitch. It is. It's not a good pitch. It actually is. I want that one or change it. Right now, I think I have more faith in the cutter. How dare you say one of my pitches is not good? I just think it's your pitch. I throw the same one you do. It has the same movement. I, you don't throw your cutter like that. It has the same movement. This is your slider. It has the same movement. All right? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not throwing it. I'm throwing it. spot. What if you just stuck with the same cutter grip? Because, look, this is the OG cutter grip. I just don't like the way it feels, and I feel like it has a tendency to back up. I don't I don't really like it. Come on, bro. I, I need to move my You thumb. You loved his. Exactly. One I day. think you loved mine. Now it's one, It was one day. That's your problem. And every day is something new. No. I have two pitches that I kept the same. On your cutter, every day is something new. And then you say it sucks. Until I have you the right one. Have you considered that maybe if you kept it the same like all your other ones, this it would be no good? One. I'm going to right now. Pitcher. What is that? That's mold. Don't eat it. I'm trying to get sick. I pitch better when I'm sick. What? No, that's not true. <laughs> were you sick that last game? No. Yeah. You were actually probably the healthiest you've been in a while. Mm-hmm. I, I would have gone rally burger, but we're not going to need it tonight. Did you hear him chanting your name, Ponce? <laughs> huh? Did you hear him chanting your name? This guy? No, the crowd. Oh, Ponce? Yeah. Ponce, right. Ponce. I don't want to you can't even keep your plan the same. You change your cutter every day. You change your plan every day. This is not a plan. That was a plan. This is wing. You said you were going to go down after the first. That's the first and second. I didn't really plan it. I, did, I just go by. I'm a freelancer. Can't save some people from themselves. Cutter's going to be good today. Cutter is going to be good today. It's going to be good in two And days. shitty tomorrow because you're going to change it tomorrow. Maybe true. <laughs> Bad nothing goes like this. That's the same thing. You saved my life, Kev. Thank you. Don't let me get frisky with the change-ups. You don't want to throw change-ups here. Yeah, I almost died catching one today. <laughs> was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, I went like this, and it came back and it hit right off the pinky and went right oh. by my face. I literally looked up and I saw it go. Yeah. <laughs> you, take you take three swings before the game? That's <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> how many games in, like, when you go to, like, Dominican for the Winter League or whatever, how many games? Is it, like, 60 games? Yeah, about 63. Yeah. But you can also show up the second half if you wanted to. Yeah. But playoffs is where it's at, like, in Dominican, because Dominican plays around Robin. Everywhere else plays around Robin except for Mexico. So do the big leaguers that play winter ball play in the Series Korea? Yeah. They do. The Dominicans do. The Dominicans and the Venezuelans do. But actually, Tatis left, though. He stayed for the whole playoffs, the semifinals, and left for the finals. Well, all the, do all the hitters come out of there. I'm sure they like to go back home and, like, be home. Like, it was nasty when, like, Tatis and, and Vladimir were, like, 4A guys. They were going up and down because yeah. they were playing DR. They were, yeah. They, at least they had, like, Ellie De La Cruz, O'Neal. <laughs> Ron, they, they had Eli De La Cruz, Ronnie Ramice, uh, Mauricio, and uh, O'Neal from the Pirates. Got Aaron some Ronald. raw talent right there. Mmm, <laughs> bang. That was crazy. Never seen it before. Hey, I, I didn't know why you editing the, the, your video. You are the one who edit your video. Yeah, the short ones. Yeah. I do the short ones, and then Kevin and my employee Paul do like the long 40 minute ones. Yeah. That's cool. This takes a lot of time. Hey, you do channel? Oh. <laughs> I tell you at the airport. Like, oh, when you start doing all of that? I started in 2011. Yeah. But then I didn't do much from like 2012 to 2019. But then really in 2019, I started doing it, taking it serious. Yeah, because on the 2019, when you get to Cincinnati, working with your camera, I, I started your camera on the 2020. Yeah. As predicted, the offense put up a bunch of runs. Robbie had two home runs, and we took the first game of the series. Well, I'm a first base outfielder again. <laughs> yes. Dude, we were, we were talking about this. You'd probably hit three for us. If, uh, if we did pitchers of this team versus hitters of this team, we played a game. Man, dude, it's... Who, who would win that, do you think? And we they, played each they other. They'd beat us. They'd beat us? Bad. Really? Yeah. I'm not saying pitching's easy, but it is a lot easier than hitting. No. It's the same. I'm telling you, it's not. It's the same. Well, that's the, that's the thing. Is, is, uh, they got a Kino throwing Kino. probably 90 for like one inning. Probably inning, yeah. No, I don't think I want pitchers, pitchers could hit. 
against 82 with slop? Bro, I am the worst hitter on this team, for sure. For sure. And you put me in a high school game, I hit fucking nukes. Claudio has a worse swing. No shot. Claudio, come here. When is the last time you hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. High school? Maybe. Maybe. Did you, do you think you're a better hitter than me or worse? No, easy. Better than you. Easy. See, that's what I'm saying. The catchers might throw good strikes. Yes, but they're going to throw 81, yeah, dude. Yeah, 81. Yeah, I'm teeing off on that. Right. The defense is tough, but I think we I think we hit. Do you think they just throw 81, though? Yeah, dude. Who on that staff is throwing mid-80s? Our plan is to go in there, see pitches. To right, two until you get... Two strikes. Right, until you get fucking Cano in there, throw him like this at 71, and then we just fucking <laughs> whack, whack, whack. Finally a day where I can get better at baseball. It is bullpen day. I either got Lakin or Leal, so all good. You got Lakin? Lay out. My pleasure, bro. Okay. <laughs> so the focus today is going to be command. Keeping my posture stable, keeping my eyes locked on the target, making sure that my body's moving athletically. Despite my body feeling mostly good all cycle, I was still dealing with a couple nagging things. Still have plantar fasciitis on my left foot. My right knee was a little bit annoyed from a pitch in the last game. What's... I'm just coming off it early because I don't want to rotate because my knee, is that why? So that wasn't great. And the mound was even more not great. Very short and steep, and your front foot actually landed on an uphill slope, which made my delivery feel very oh, awkward and uncomfortable. I did some athletic drills to try to make my delivery feel more comfortable, and that usually works, but not today. That ended up being one of my worst bullpens all year. Not a very encouraging feeling going into a game against one of the best teams in the league. All right, we gotta get our conditioning in. So we got some gasters today, but uh, I'm gonna run them with no shoes on. One of the things I've had going on is my feet have been a little bit painful, I guess. I've had plantar fasciitis. And on the right side, two starts ago, I had some weird little pain go on in between my big toe and my pointer toe. I think I need to like get my feet activated and get the musculature in my ankles. And walking around barefoot, kind of squeezing the ground a little bit, walking around on the turf helps, but I think running gassers with uh, bare feet, as long as I don't do any damage to my feet, will be a good thing for me. You feel sometimes your feet just kind of get cramped like this? Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons that I have the plantar fasciitis stuff. Like I notice walking around, like I walk on the outside of my heel and I like never get to my toes, never activate them. As soon as I activate my toes, I'm like, oh, everything feels better. Is that what you might have felt in the, in the, in the bullpen? I honestly think so. I like, my foot was kind of like this in the pen. So most of my weight was on my heel because I couldn't get it on my toe because it wasn't. It was all ready. Yeah. Normally I just like rock forward like this and then my toes have to activate. I'm not really on my heel much. What percent is on like your first half of the foot right here? I'd say like when I'm set, 75. That's what I figured. Maybe 80. Most guys come set and they want to like load their hip. So all the weight's in the heel. But like I come set, I just like roll forward towards the ball of my foot. So when I come up, I'm still grabbing with like this part, not as much on the heel. So I come down, I get to that point where I can actually turn and rotate. But I think today, since my foot was already like this, and most of my weight was in the heel, my toes were disactivated or deactivated. And when I came up, I'd go down, but I was on like this. Yeah, it would land on some of them and my hip hadn't rotated. So I felt like I was pulling and cutting balls and I was like pulling everything. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I felt in the front of my shoulder because I was crossing. I was finishing like this. And then the athletic throws the last couple, I felt like that. I was like, oh yeah, that's what it's supposed to feel like. They're just really hard to get that feeling on the mound for whatever reason. Cleats are obviously necessary for the game, but if you can ditch them for warmups on a routine basis, it's something you should definitely consider. Yeah, he only says that they're, hey. Hey. they're playing, they're Trevor. cold. What's up? I have oh. two sons. Okay. They're twins. They're 19. Okay. We live in Arizona. What part? They follow Mesa. And they follow you. And they said, can you tell Trevor to say something to me? Yeah. AJ and DJ. AJ and DJ. Yeah. AJ, DJ, what's up, guys? It's Trevor Bauer. Keep working hard. Keep chasing your dreams, playing football, studying in school, whatever it is. Work hard. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. For sure. Where's my vitamin C? I want some C in my life. How many pairs of those cleats Definitely do you have? have. I have two pairs with me, and I have 28 more back home. Okay. Of the same, like, mustache with the all white. What size? Red outline mustache. 13 white and probably 14 black. Of the same pleat? Yeah. <laughs> From 2020. I used one I used one pair of white and one pair of black oh, wow. so during the 2020 okay. season because it was two months. They're comfortable. But they sent me one pair per start for that year early, you know, like in spring training. And then I have the same number of Dodger cleats from 2020. One. What do those colors look like? Yeah, white, blue, and red for home. 
with like palm trees and like a microphone for Vin Scully and a bunch of stuff on it. And the road ones were gray and blue and white. You designed your own cleat. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I designed. Yeah, you don't see the mustache and shit. Well, like, oh, I, don't, I don't look at anybody's because I don't give a shit, uh, but now I need to inspect it. I do. Well, the cleat, like the, the cleat model is like a Nike cleat, but the coloring and all the act, like all the design elements. So I, I didn't thought, like. I thought you meant like the whole cleat. You uh, I was, I was part of designing that model of cleat with like the way that the shoe Isn't twists. It like this one where it like twists a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So the twisting, I was part of developing like the twisting of the cleat what's for the, pitchers. What's the model? Are we able to buy it or is it? It's the Alpha Hirachi yeah. 4s, I think. Alpha Hirachi 4 is the one you helped design. I believe I have to. we can buy. The ones that I have from 2021, I don't think are are publicly available. Yeah, no, you can get them on Amazon or something for sure. But you can get the threes. Oh, you haven't seen the fours? Because I tried to order more of them for Japan last year in different colors, and I couldn't get the fours. I could only get the threes, and the threes don't have the sole that twists. So the sole twists, and you have yeah. the sole that twists? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you took the shoe off, it's been... Oh, my God. Four nothing, boys. There we go. Oh, I know that. Are they not yeah, making this anymore? Yeah. The, the reacts? I think the reacts so have... To me, this felt like look, it can twist. Yes, like, the re like that yeah, 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 exactly. So the reacts the reacts have that sole now, too. That's what, that's how, was the, uh, how was the cutter yesterday? So during the bullpen, not good. Then after the bullpen, I went and talked to him, and then I threw him, like, three on the side. Perfect. Man. And then today, perfect. With the two C and cutter oh, grip, or oh, C C. It was a slider. Yeah, last year, check this out. I'm, I've never been on a winning team, right? We clinched playoffs. No celebration. What? We don't celebrate. Bad. We're celebrating this, this year. Year we have three advanced to the second round. Like that's what we're supposed to do. Fucking a stupid though. We're celebrating this year. Playoffs. Nada. See, I'll put it. I'll put it on the vlog. Yeah, we just found out that apparently we don't celebrate going to playoffs or winning a playoff round, which I think is ridiculous. How do you not celebrate going to playoffs? Like it's special every year. That's what we do. Well, You're yeah, you should fucking celebrate every time. <laughs> and what would you, you say about playoff beards? Playoff beard? Oh, we have playoff beards? Oh. No, we don't. Oh. Say, we're just know. adding that. We're just adding that in there. I'm not going to the playoffs and not popping bottles. That's one of the best things. What yeah, have you heard about this? They don't celebrate like going to playoffs or like winning a playoff round here. Trevor from the future here with a breaking news update. We did indeed celebrate, and it was a little bit different than MLB celebrations. <laughs> Now, let's make a deal. I'm trying to hit a million subs by Christmas because that gold plaque is gonna look great under the Christmas tree. So if you hit subscribe right now and help me reach my goal, I'll bring you guys inside the clubhouse for the playoff celebration so you can experience it like you were there. And that's something you can't get anywhere else. I think that's a pretty good deal, right? Just hit subscribe right now. How do we have no peanut butter? You can't have peanut butter and jelly without peanut butter. Yeah, get you some, Kev. That's like Nutella, but it's like a... If it stay like this, they're gonna keep it. Nope. Oh no, this guy called it. Oh. God damn it. Oh, oh, man. Oh, sorry. Thankfully, we had played five innings, so the game was considered a complete game, and we took our fifth win in a row. The team had a night game on Thursday, but I was pitching Friday at home, so I took Thursday to travel back home so I could get my throwing done and a good night's sleep. Oh my goodness. My green ball just popped. Which leaves me without a green ball for my start tomorrow, which is pretty devastating, and I gotta figure out how to get a new one here to Mexico. <sighs> Oh, it just hit me in the eye. Uh, oh yeah, while we're at it, we're here in Mexico City. The team is still in Querétaro. I decided to drive back early and get my throwing in here at the field. Yeah, I'm definitely hitting the net. <laughs> Couple problems, I'm glad we left early because we left at noon, we got in at five. It's supposed to be a two hour drive, but there's rain and there's accidents on the road. I would not have gotten in until like all hours of the morning. We're hoping that there's not a repeat of going to Querétaro because on the way to Querétaro, it was a two hour drive that turned into an eight hour drive with accidents and stuff. So I'm gonna show up here tomorrow. Hopefully my team's here as well. And hopefully it doesn't rain because it's raining outside, which explains why we're inside playing catch in the cage. So there's a lot going on right now. Okay, now yesterday I threw a terrible pen and that was because I thought I was on my heel on my right foot instead of on my ball of foot and big toe. And then because my hips weren't rotating, my torso was peeling off and I was pulling the ball and finishing like this, like I never do. Anyway, it was a mess. So today the focus is get the weight on the ball of my right foot and my big toe and feel the hips go first and lead the torso. I'm gonna start off in what I call a static 45 drill. Throw out of that till I get the feeling and then we're gonna progress from there. 
Now, if you at home are having trouble with your mechanics, either your velocity isn't there or your command's off or mechanics just feel weird, you can download four app sports at the app store and get a mechanical analysis from me. I will personally look at your mechanics, tell you what's wrong with them, give you some drills to do to work on them like this static 45 drill. It's only $200 and by the time this video comes out, our new throwing programming will probably be launched, which means you get a list of exercises to do every single day with weights, intensities, volumes, and it all updates daily based on how your body's feeling when you check in in the morning. Not only does it come with the drills that you need to do, but the progressions that you need to do as well. I started off with the static 45 and if I was a mechanical analysis user, I would get a progression. The next one may be the dynamic 45 drill. And these drills and sequences are all based on what I see in your delivery. So when I break down your mechanics, there's a progression to work from the most constrained drill all the way back towards the delivery. So you can seamlessly integrate the new movement patterns into your pitching delivery. So for this progression today, I started with the static 45 drill for two reasons. One, because my heel is elevated, my right heel. That forces me onto the ball of my foot and my big toe. And two, because I can load the hip and just focus on doing nothing but rotating the hip first to ensure that my hips are going first. And this is what that looks like. Now I did about 10 of those. And once I had that feeling of that, I'm moving on to the dynamic 45 drill. So the dynamic 45 drill is the same as the static, only instead of being in a spread out position, your feet are closer together and you're gonna slide your foot along the ground and make the throw, but you still wanna feel the hip going before the torso. And you still wanna make sure your heel is elevated so you're on the ball of the foot and big toe. Load the hip and execute the throw. <laughs> Change up. <laughs> that, was, that was sick. Now, both of the drills I've done so far, I've started with my heel elevated. Obviously I don't start that way on the mound. So now I'm gonna start with my foot flat on the ground weight shifted towards the ball of my foot and big toe. But I'm gonna start like Andrew Miller used to start his delivery. He'd come set and he'd kind of like open the torso and look at the target. So now I'm gonna get the feeling of a slide step from a semi-set position. Everything biased towards the ball of my foot and big toe. Now the purpose of this drill is to feel the hips going before the torso. Since the torso is starting open, the hips also start open. So when I slide my foot forward, my hips are already in an open position, but my torso is not just gonna throw from right here. So my torso has to retract against my hips that are already open. So I feel the right timing of the shoulder hip separation. Now I can already feel my hip and shoulders moving a lot better today than they were yesterday. The next drill I'm gonna to do today is called a stretch to heel elevated pause drill. And the purpose of this is to make sure that I go through my stretch and I get to the right point here and I pause. I wanna make sure I'm still on the ball of my foot. My hips are slightly open, that I'm not stuck on my heel and sliding towards the plate like this. This is what that drill looks like. You go through your normal stretch and you pause, check your position. Now it turns into a static 45 drill and you complete the throw. Now, fortunately for me, when I feel something's off in my delivery, I know exactly what to do, what drills to go to, what I'm supposed to be feeling and all the effects that poor mechanics can have on my pitching. So I have a lot of knowledge and I know how to correct myself very quickly. If you'd like me to do a full breakdown of your mechanics, so you can have that knowledge and you can get all the drills to do so you know exactly what's supposed to happen in the delivery and you can fix what flaws you have, go to the App Store, type in 4APP Sports and download it and get a mechanical analysis and throwing program from me. Oh yeah, there it was. I actually felt my hip turn and everything. It is amazing how the right drill progression can get you right and like, Yes. 20 throws. While I was fixing my delivery, the team won our game to complete the sweep at Cadetado, and it was finally time to see if my fastball would be good enough to handle Yucatan's lineup. Same. Say the middle for face. Yep, sounds good. We got it. We'll just attack them, get ahead. If they come out swinging, we'll see it and we'll adjust. Just want to say to all the fans that came out for this game, 15,000 people uh, got Trevor Bauer 19K shirts. I see you all in the stands. I appreciate you. I apologize in advance for not being able to sign for every single one of you and take a picture and say hi, but I really appreciate you coming out. Hopefully enjoy the game. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I won't throw any two seamers tonight because it doesn't move here. So it'll all be. Yep, came out swinging, laid his f on, whatever that was. The first fastball of the game was only 91, and it ended up as a hit. Not a great start, but I was prepared for this. The first time I faced these guys, I completely destroyed them with off-speed stuff, so I figured they'd come out swinging early in the count, not looking to get off-speed stuff in two strike counts. Now he's gonna try to steal, so we'll be quick here. 
You should be out. Yeah, you're out. Oh, uh, that's gonna be a homer foul. So they're coming out hacking at fastball. That's fine. Can't cover it all, guys. Turns out my fastball wasn't good enough early in the game to handle their approach, but I had come up with a plan. Throw off-speed stuff early in the count and throw my best fastball late to beat him with that. So for the next six innings, I threw almost exclusively first pitch off-speed and I racked up eight Ks while doing so. Doors! 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 <laughs> Doors! In the second inning, I decided to see if my fastball had returned, so I told the last hitter of the inning what was coming and threw him a fastball. <laughs> right off the end. I'm like, you know. In the fifth, a man by the name of Yadir Drake grounded a first pitch cutter to third base, and as he was sulking his way back across the field, he passed me and said, throw me a damn fastball. Huh? You want a fastball? Next at bat. You really didn't want to do that, my guy. By the end of the sixth inning, I had accomplished my goal. Six innings, no runs. But I needed to face Drake one more time to see if begging in baseball actually worked out for him. Here's how that at bat went. Now, after blowing 97 past him, I decided to go back to the fastball. I had completely forgotten about my ERA at this point. Pride was on the line, and I was going to blow a fastball right by him for the strikeout. Mother I went 6.2 innings, 8 Ks, allowed 2 runs, and got another win, but I did lose the pride bin, and that hurts. If you enjoyed this video, help me feel better by hitting subscribe and helping me get to a million subs by Christmas. And then check out this video to catch up on all the storylines from the season. I guess begging for fastballs does work sometimes.